Hello everyone, it's me, Wokey. Are you ready for another adventure? I'm back with some Dragalia Lost. And today I have extremely good news. The puppy is going to be returning back. This was, it turned out, uh, kind of, I guess, an early look into a new feature that they're going to do. So, uh, yeah, Wagabon Pupper. The pupper will return when? Who knows? Whenever the update that contains pup stuff, he'll be here. But that's not the only thing we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about... Oh, this here banner right here, because as you know, um, this is the brand new banner that came out around, the info came out around the same time as the pup, I just didn't want to talk about it because all I cared about was the puppy, and now it's here, but also wanted to wait off a bit because I was just so unsure of this type of unit and stuff. So yeah, today's video is going to be an overview, and then at the end we'll discuss whether or not I think you should summon and whether or not I'm going to be summoning, so we'll see. Um, so yeah. That's today's video. And remember, if you end up liking it, please leave a like. It shows a lot of support. Funny enough, a lot of, you know, I've been doing pretty good with my Dragalia stuff, so I want to thank you all out there, all the people who are out there liking, watching, doing all that stuff. Like, well, no matter what, it's been really humbling to see my Dragalia stuff kind of grow over time. So now that I'm talking about it, that means I'm about to fail. So, <laughs> as is the case, if the, the Bible has taught me anything. Anyway... That's what we're going to be doing. Also, comment, tell me how you feel about these units. Did you pull? If you pulled, did you get them? All that kind of stuff. But yeah. Okay, so first up, the adventurer. I'll show you the failure who's really the strongest. Belina? Belena? Belina. Belena. A woman whose lust for combat was given a strike against power by the shadowy syndicate. She bears no hatred for the group, instead choosing to bask in her new abilities, even if they do occasionally run berserk. Renegade Descent deals shadow damage to the target and nearby enemies. Damage will be increased as the user HP decreases. If this skill is used during a Dragon Drive, a variant called Renegade Dragonfall will be used instead. Renegade Dragonfall deals shadow damage to multiple targets and enemies near those targets and dispels one buff from each. Damage will be increased uh, as the user's HP decreases. Using this skill will consume 25% of the user's Dragon Drive gauge but fills 100% of the skill's skill gauge after use. Um, fill, wait, wait a minute, fills 100%, but it's only when it's in the other mode, right? Okay, yeah, that's only when it's in dra uh, Renegade Dragonfall, not in the first one. A Renegade Gambit fills 40% of the user's Dragon Drive gauge. If the user's HP is above 30% of max HP, reduces their HP to 30% of max HP and fills the Dragon Drive gauge relative to the amount of HP that was lost. If this skill is used during Dragon Drive, a variant called Renegade Shadow Blaze will be used instead. If the user's HP is above 30%, of max HP, Renegade Shadow Blades reduces their HP to 30% of max HP and deals shadow damage to the enemy directly ahead. Damage will be increased as the user's HP decreases. Using Renegade Shadow Blades will consume all of the user's Dragon Drive gauge. And then her co op ability is critical rate 10%, and then her chain co op ability is HP uh, below 40% equals light resistance 10%. Her ability is uh, Renegade Queen 2, grants the user a uh, Dragon Drive Gauge and changes the Shapeshift button into the Dragon Drive Gauge button. Pressing this button activates their Dragon Drive during Dragon Drive. <laughs> really? But pressing this button activates their Dragon Drive during Dragon Drive. Okay, there's, there's a pause. The user's standard attacks and force strikes will be changed. Damage will be increased as the user's HP decreases and the standard attacks and force strikes will fill the user's Dragon Drive Gauge. While the Dragon Drive gauge is active, the user's skill damage will be increased by 35% and defense will be increased by 75%. Blindness resistance 100% and HP below 30% equals strength and attack rate up by 10%. Whew. So yeah, she is basically a gotcha version of the free unit that we got, except for she seems... So here's the one thing, the, one of the reasons I actually wanted to wait off for the really sake, is I actually was very curious how... Um, damage wise she was going to do because when I was using the free one I wasn't 100% sure how it would end up looking it did seem like the mechanic was very strong but maybe on a four it didn't feel like the strongest and I haven't really gone back to him so if it turns out that he's actually super strong um tell me about it all so I can see how it is but my understand my look at him at the beginning was like if only he had a little bit more Belena has a little bit more she has it all because she has the Galicleo thing. This thing right here where she just like uses 100% of max 8, uh, basically fills the skill gauge all the way up is crazy nuts. And actually, thanks to the Dragon Alliance Discord, which I'm going to actually pause here so I can show you the video. 
One moment. Okay. This was a, um, a video provided by Richard, who was in the Dra- Tra- Trash Alliance Discord of his friends streaming the game. This is her doing her damage, dealing crazy damage right here, which is kind of nuts. I'm going to replay it one more time just so you can see that again. Uh, you can see right there kind of how the HP is going down really, really quick. <laughs> it's goes down insanely fast i can't show it any better on my phone also this video is by um if you want to, I'll, I'll put a link actually to it it's by i could believe it's uh bk dmg yum cookies so there you go check it out this specific clip i'll make sure to actually link it in the in the, the video description just so you can see yourself but it's nuts crazy damage for sure okay with that kind of look at her let's go on to something else now uh we got here we have the dragon andromeda uh dragon details a dragon captured by the vile syndicate she shoulders the sins of all people and though offering herself up cleanses them of said sin what she shoulders the sins of all people and through offering herself up cleanses them of said sin or so it is said she lost her memory due to the syndicate testing and now travels with aldrin uh, deal shadow damage to the uh, to the target and nearby enemies, increasing the entire team's defense by 30% for 15 seconds. Shadow strength 40% if they're attuned to shadow, that is. And shadow HP below 30% equals strength and defense up. Uh, increase strength by 40% defense by 100% when HP is 30% or below. So she is specifically meant to be used with a, basically what is a new subset of shadow units, which they've had for a while, like uh, Valentine Adis was the same way um he gets below 30 percent and chelsea is also a similarly unit like that who is a fire bow unit um so maybe we're gonna start seeing more units like this where they're supposed to take a lot of damage but uh this seems pretty good but i feel like um for a lot of these dudes like okay so all together once they hit below 30 percent they're gonna get um 80 percent attack from this in theory uh, but I feel like still most shadow units just end up using Shinobi because of all the skill damage. Just to show off Shinobi real quick. But you know, you never know just because it's so specifically niche. I mean, it's super niche, but for the niche that she's supposed to be filling, it's actually super useful. So let's see. He gives 20%. Then 90%. It's actually very hard to <laughs> imagine not using Shinobi, but... This is another case of just like, I'm not 100% sure which one you would use, but I don't know. I like uh, Andromeda, so if I get her, I'll gladly use her. Maybe she'd be good to put more on um, the CPU. But yeah, she's super niche. But I think in the hands of the AI, just so that you know that the 30% below units, when they use that skill and they go close to kill range, they can actually survive something. It would actually be very useful, because I think the AI is not going to be able to use any of the overdrive effect. That's a, I don't know, it's a niche. It's a definite niche, but I, I don't know. It's a niche I could see actually being fulfilled in some crazy way. Um, but maybe I'm just trying to see if... Maybe it's because I like Andromeda so much that I want to find a use for her. Maybe that's it. But, you know, I could definitely see her being used in some way. But, yeah, that's the banner. And that's these two, and this is also part one, meaning there's going to be another one coming later. So, should you summon on this? I don't know to be 100%. I'm not going to be summoning on it because Fire Emblem is coming at uh, the end of the month. I have all the Fire Emblem uh, characters from the first crossover, but the new ones I'm not so sure about. Um, And especially after my experience with Hunter uh, uh, Cerise, I just know for sure that whatever they got planned for the crossover character, I think they're going to be extremely strong, whoever it may be. I could definitely see someone else like that too and hopefully for other elements that are not Shadow. Uh, the other thing, the other reason I'm not summoning on this is because I already have Gala Alex. And Gala, the, you know, I know it's a very shitty thing to say, of kind of be like, oh, I have one of the strongest units in the game. Um, but there's really no reason for me to also get another shadow unit that's also extremely strong. Now, I will say, if you missed out on Gala uh, Alex and you, or you weren't interested in her, and you don't have Gala Cleo, this is another good unit. But there's also so many shadow units that are just good overall <laughs> that it actually kind of is like, it's actually very tough to realize, like, what shadow what shadow unit should I go for? The answer is all of them are good. So you could go for all of them if you want, but that would be a freaking crazy thing because you could only use four in a team. And currently my team, I think, is already built up. So the only reason I would want Belina would, is for personal reasons to just have her. And I, I don't really see a reason to go 
crazy summoning for it especially because she's not limited which is actually very important is that she'll always be on the banner and uh, i have very weird things about chasing units that are limited because the second you have them suddenly they show up in your summons when you don't want them and stuff like that it's a curse so yeah i think she's uh, uh she's extremely good she looks ex here's the one thing the reason i badly want her though her animations are awesome she looks cool she plays fun and I think that's as important as being strong. The fact that she's also good is another like cherry on top as far as I'm concerned. Cause she was already just like really cool looking and she had a bunch of cool animations. It's similar to actually the free to play unit now that I think about it, where he's very cool that I actually don't care if he's good or bad or not. He's just fun to like screw around with and actually play with. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. If you're gonna summon for it, I would say, you know, she's good enough that it seems like it's a solid enough pick, uh, pick for it. Um, the thing that I'm not 100% sure on is whether or not, it basically depends on how much you care about Fire Emblem Heroes and how much free multis you think that's going to give us. Because I want to give a, a heads up. I do think one one's part of the summon banner is going to get free multis. The problem is um, Hunter Cerise for Monster Hunter, who I expected to get free multis, did not get free multis. So now I'm very cautious about like, well, if she didn't get free multis, I'm going to have to save up everything I have because I don't like the idea of not having the super limited units from crossovers that uh, took took like a year to come back and stuff. So yeah, that's today's video. Again, those are my thoughts. If you have specific thoughts, leave them in the comments. I'll read them and see what's up, how you're feeling. And again, if you summon for her, tell me if you got her or not. Very interested to see. Uh, link in the description for the video that I tried to show in a really weird way. Um, hopefully it was able to play, but you should check out that clip and, I don't know, go support them, I guess. They also do Dragalia stuff. This is the first time I've supported someone else that does Dragalia stuff, I guess. Oh. I never thought about how I just kind of record Dragalia videos. Don't really think about the other people that are also playing Dragalia. Anyway, I'm rambling on anyway. That's the end of today's video. If you liked it, please leave a like, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good day. Have a good night, and I'll see you guys next time.